All right. Okay, it says are. it's recording for us, so... Okay. So, uh, welcome everyone to the Quantum Energy Initiative Seminar. I think this is the fourth sem seminar we're giving. So, the Quantum Energy Initiative is a community that gathers experts and from various fields, uh, from applied engineering technologies to fundamental quantum physics. And the, the purpose of this initiative is to find uh, realistic metrics and estimation of physical resources, especially energetic resources um, that uh, necessary to build and use quantum technologies and what would be their impact on society. Uh, this time we have the honor to host Masahiro Otta, um, who has been working on quantum energy teleportation, uh, which sounds like uh, Star Trek concepts, and it is what it is. Um, so it's a very interesting work that I was following a few years ago, and I was thinking, this guy is either crazy or a genius, and has finally, uh, <laughs> and has finally uh, found the attention from the community uh, that this work deserves. Um, so yeah, thanks, Masahiro, for coming, yeah. giving Thank us you. your time. Uh, uh, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, for giving the opportunity to talk in the seminar. Uh, so uh, this talk is based on this paper. So I have many, many collaborators. Then, so let me start a very quick introduction of quantum energy teleportation. Some of you are not so familiar of this concept. So very recently, uh, two independent experiments of quantum energy teleportation um, have been reported. One came from IQC uh, at the University of Rotaru in Canada. And the other uh, experimental result came from Sony Brook uh, by uh, Kazuki Keda. And uh, the two experiments uh, have been chosen, one of the top three biggest breakthroughs in physics for 2023 by Quantum Magazine, and that is a publication of the uh, Simons Foundation. Mm, that's very nice, I think. And uh, so now today, let's consider the version, QUITY, uh, uh, condensed matter version of QUITY, I'd like to explain. So the QUITY is a physics of energy and quantum information in zero point fluctuation of many body system. Okay, let's consider general setup. So non-negative operator as Hamilton is considered in the, in, as a first, uh, the Hamilton uh, uh, satisfies in, in the cold key. And the ground state is defined by this equation. The G is a ground state, which has an eigenvalue of total Hamiltonian, of which equal exactly zero in this case. But now, uh, so this total Hamiltonian is just uh, given by the summation of the local energy density operator at site N. So the Hamiltonian is just in a site, uh, site summation of such an operators. And uh, by, shifting const by shifting constant in the definition of T hat of N, then so the expectation value of energy density can be uh, uh, zero you know, in general without the loss of generality. Um, but this condition is, of, of course, consist consistent with the total energy eigenvalue vanishes like that. Anyway, this is a setup. Then, uh, for example, we have an explicit example, you know, like a spin chain with a nearest neighbor interaction. So here we have uh, such a site N, and we have energy density operator T hat N. So, uh, then, so this T N has uh, such a hole. Okay, the O hat is a lock operator at the site uh, at each side. So, so example, if we, you would like to consider critical using spin chain, then the, the Hamiltonian is given by this equation. Then the energy density operator is given by this. Uh, contribution, this uh, uh, equation. Okay, this is a notation in, of this talk. And uh, in ordinary systems, the Hamiltonian and energy density do not commute with each other. 
So you can directly compute such in a, a commutators between the energy density at site M and at site N. Then, so you get such a non-trivial, non-vanishing contribution in general. And by summing in the energy density operator uh, with respect to uh, N, then you get the total Hamiltonian. But uh, in general, the total Hamiltonian does not uh, commute with uh, such a local energy density, okay, without any fine tuning for the model. And uh, for the quantum system with entangled ground state, the energy density operator have negative eigenvalue. So uh, for the entangled group, uh, ground state, so we can consider such a you know, two-point function of the energy density operator at the site N and some local operator at the site N. And if this correlation function does not satisfy such a you know, factorization relation, then you can prove that and this TN, energy density operator, has a negative, ne negative eigenvalue. So we have some a uh, fluctuation and you can take the negative value of the energy density in some region, okay? The existence of a negative energy density region should be accompanied by positive energy density region as dictated by the non-negativeness of the total Hamiltonian. So total Hamiltonian cannot take a negative value uh, even in uh, uh, expectation value. So here we have, let's consider such a negative energy region, but we, this negative energy region should be accompanied by such a positive energy region in order to make the total Hamiltonian should be non-negative, okay? In the entangled ground state, energy density is not constrained to remain at zero. So T the ground state is not eigenstate of this operator, Tn or sub n. So this implies that we have some quantum fluctuation, even though the average value itself is vanish. Um, uh, expected value takes the zero value, but uh, we have some quantum fluctuation uh, of the value of the, the energy density. So we have such a quantum fluctuation. And the zero point energy in the ground state is very interesting, which appears, and this appears in the various areas of physics, including a Casimir effect and Anlu effect and Hawking rotation out of a black one and blah, 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 many, many physics we have. Of course, the zero point energy cannot be extracted through any local operation. Thus, resembling energy being conserved within a secured self beneath the ground, like <laughs> this cartoon. <laughs> so we have ground and we have some safety box under the ground uh, and uh, some energy is uh, stored in this box. But you cannot uh, extract this energy by local operations. But uh, here we have a very good tool that is the quantum entanglement in the ground state. So local zero-point fluctuations become entangled as a result of nearest neighbor interactions among subsystem straight at the distinct point like that. So the subsystem A and the subsystem B are entangled even in the ground state. And performing measurement of zero-point fluctuation at a point Zero point energy at a distance point because activated via ground state entanglement and can be extracted by local operation depending on the measurement result. This is this protocol is quantum energy teleportation that is QT. So this is a schematic figure which describes the idea of the QT. Okay, so here we have a ground and we have a safety box. But we perform local measurement at a distant point here. But uh, so we measure some quantum fluctuation at the subsystem A, but this uh, information, the measurement result includes the information of quantum fluctuation around B, okay, distant point fluctuation. And also 
No, I like to stress that this measurement requires an uh, energy cost. Things. So the initial state is ground state. Ground state is the lowest energy state, right? But after such a measurement, the post measurement state should be excited state, which is to us, which kind of energy. Then, so the measurement operators should inject such an energy to get the information, zero point of flux change information. Okay. And this information is correlated. This information is entangled with the quantum fluctuation around B. So by using this information, you can extract the positive energy from the zero point of fluctuation in the region of B by generating negative energy in the region B. So this is the quantum energy teleportation. Of course, the total Hamiltonian should be non-negative. So this constraint gives us this inequality. The energy cost is upper bound, energy cost is lower bounded by the teleported energy EB. Okay. So we have no breakdown of energy conservation law in this protocol. And also very interestingly, QET can play a lot of energy bank. So um, Let's consider such in a spin chain energy bank. And this bank has some uh, empty ATM at a distance point. Uh, since this ATM is completely empty, so ships can sell nothing. And now uh, Alice visits the spin chain bank and deposits some energy EA. Then, so, uh, this bank uh, uh, gives na Alice na password about that. And after that, Alice uh, uh, send this information of password to Bob. Bob is just uh, in front of this empty ATM, but by using this password, so Bob can extract positive energy from the empty ATM. Inside the ATM, we have the negative energy excitation. So we, we have no break uh, no breakdown of energy conservation in this process. Okay. Uh, so this is a very quick introduction of QET. And uh, I'd like to go to more detailed part of QET. In the next section, uh, I'd like to explain the strong local passivity of many body systems at low temperature. Uh, in section three, uh, I'd like to QET again as a possibility breaking. After that, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce our, our ongoing QET experiment at Tohoku University uh, by using quantum hole system. After that, I'd like to summarize my talk. Okay, so uh, let's go to the second part, some local possibility. Okay, so <laughs> refresh your uh, brain. <laughs> so first, let me start now ordinary quantum statistical mechanics. So let's consider a general uh, spin system, many body system like that. And we consider a thermal equilibrium at the temperature T. Beta is uh, just inverse of temperature, okay? And now, so this system is in a given state given by this equation. H hat is the total Hamiltonian of the C system. And now, let us consider some cyclic procedure to by adding some external force or external interaction, uh, which is uh, described by this equation. So O hat of T is some operator. And G of T is a coupling constant, time-dependent time, -dependent time uh, coupling constant. At, at the initial time, T equals zero, and the final time, uh, T equals TL, the coupling constant vanishes completely. Then, so Hamiltonian uh, comes back to the original Hamiltonian, H hat. Okay, so this is some cyclic procedure, which is uh, often considered in uh, ordinary quantum statistical mechanics or some dynamics. 
Then, so we can define such a time of evolution operator you had by using this Hamiltonian. Then we have a very famous uh, theorem uh, that is a uh, possibility theorem, you know, who, which was a uh, pro uh, problem by these people in 1978. So this implies that. So after this circuit, after this procedure, the expectation value of the total Hamiltonian does not increase. Okay, so this is a final energy. This part is the final energy. This is initial energy, but the uh, the difference cannot be in, in negative. So we should. <laughs> this system has got some positive energy, or just equal to zero. No, no difference. So this implies uh, usually the stability of the thermal equilibrium state and the internal perturbation. So thermal state is very uh, stable due to this property. But uh, also, it, it is, I'd like to stress that this theorem also means that local unitary operations cannot extract thermal energy from the system at all. Okay, so let's focus on this subsystem here. And you may perform local unitary to this subsystem only. But uh, even in this situation, you should inject energy. You cannot extract uh, some energy from this subsystem. This sounds very weird for some of you, because usually we can extract such a thermal energy even from such a subsystem. But uh, please uh, uh, remind that. So we need some a uh, low temperature answer system outside the system, and also we use it in a global time evolution. So thermal energy extraction is attained using both low temperature answer systems and the time evolution of the total system. But this time evolution can be described by a global CPT operation, right? So we have such a uh, thermal energy flow inside the system. But if you would like to realize such a thermal energy flow, you should wait uh, for a while. Okay? It requires a finite time, okay? which is uh, computed from the total Hamiltonian. Okay. So in such a situation, uh, you can extract the thermal energy like that, also, of course. But uh, this procedure is a global CPT operation. Then, so we have a crucial question for rapid local cooling or fast start in the quantum devices. So the question is the following. Can, the, can some energy be extracted so, so we, so we, through the SR establishing point contact with the low temperature answer system? Within a brief period, we bring the global evolution of the system can be omitted. So do you know the answer? Of course, some of you already have an example. If we have no interaction between the subsystem, we have no ground state entanglement. In such a situation, in this previous situation, the thermal energy can be locally extracted completely. So the Hamiltonian is given by the sum of the local Hamiltonians, you know, B and B bar. B bar is a complementary subsystem of B. And then the ground state is also just in a product state, like that. And the Gibbs state is also the product state, like that. Okay. Then, so you have already have such a local uh, CPT operation, or B. Uh, uh, in which every state can uh, transform into a ground state. So uh, such an uh, CPT operation is very well known. So if we take such an uh, CPT operation, so the whole sum energy inside the subsystem B can be uh, completely extracted by this uh, operation. Oh, this is very trivial uh, case, but Unfortunately, uh, in general, 
we cannot uh, extract some energy uh, for rapid uh, CPT operation, rapid local CPT operation. And this is strong local possibility, uh, which was first proven by us in this paper. For systems with max rank and tangled ground state, there exists a critical temperature T star. T star is fixed by the total Hamiltonian. And at temperatures lower than T star, no local CPT operation decreases energy of the system. This is a statement of this theory. Okay, so let's consider again a general many body system. And let's consider the Schmidt decomposition of the ground state. Okay, so, so this uh, uh, for B and B bro. Uh, this AN vector is the orthonormal basis of the subsystem B. And this N state is an uh, orthonormal uh, state of the B bar. And uh, this PN is a non negative coefficient. Root of PN is a non vanishing, uh, non negative uh, coefficient of the Schmidt decomposition. Then uh, we define the max like entanglement in the ground state is fine. So all of the coefficients does not punish. This is the definition of the maximum entanglement in the ground state. So then if ground state entanglement is max rank and the temperature T is lower than T star, then you can prove that, uh, uh, you can prove this inequality. Uh, so gamma B is arbitrary local CP operation. So you, you can perform arbitrary local physical process, physical operation to subsystem B, but you cannot extract some energy at all. This may be interesting for you. So we have some intuitive uh, picture for the strong local passivity. Okay, let's consider your hand. Your hand uh, temperature is a bit, uh, lower than the T. T is a system temperature. But uh, T is just lower than critical temperature T star. In such situation, uh, your hand uh, should move very fast. They make a local point contact with subsystem B. But this motion is very rapid. So this procedure inject energy to this system. This is the essence of the, this strong local possibility. Okay, so if you touch the subsystem B, you should inject energy. You cannot extract energy, some energy at all. And so let me consider more uh, a concrete model for which exhibit the strong local possibility. But the two qubit is in a model with transverse magnetic field. Okay. So the Hamiltonian is given by this equation. And we have uh, three contributions like that. And uh, H, HA uh, just a uh, free Hamiltonian of the spin A and HB is a uh, free Hamiltonian of the spin B. And which includes just a uh, Z component of the power, of mat power matrix, okay? And uh, B is just interaction between the two particles. And in this setup, the, this potential, this interaction just includes the X components of the power matrix for each particle, okay? And also we add some constant here uh, in order to make the average value or expectation value vanishes in the ground state. And H and K is a company constant of which takes the positive value in this case. This is our model. A uh, two qubit eating model. Then, so we can explicitly compute the ground state. So this is the result. And uh, you notice that, oh, this ground state has a max rank entanglement since the two component, uh, and the coefficient of the two component does not vanish. So this implies that this entanglement is a max rank. Okay, so, oh, uh, 
in this sense, this system should uh, exhibit certain strong local passivity in the uh, low temperature regime. Okay, we can check explicitly. So let consider such a give state at temperature T. Okay. And the quantum entanglement is completely vanished at temperature higher than T E, T sub E. T sub E is another critical temperature which is computed by this uh, equation. Okay. Uh, above this temperature, we have no quantum entanglement. We have just classical correlation. Okay. And also, we have the critical temperature T star, which is lower than T sub E. Uh, uh, the T star is computed in this case by this equation. Okay. Then, so in the low temperature regime, uh, we have a strong local passivity. So this uh, plot is just an example with some parameter of the model. So horizontal line represents the temperature and the vertical line represents the maximal sum of energy extraction out of subsystem B by local CPT operation. So you, you can find that in high temperature regime. So you can subtract, you can extract the sum energy from B. But uh, in low temperature regime, uh, you have no energy gain. Instead, you should inject energy to the system. That is a strong local passivity regime. So this is uh, some example of strong local passivity. Okay, now let's go back to QED, quantum energy teleportation as a passivity break. Strong local passivity can be broken by simultaneously using local operations and classical communication, that's the LOCC, in a short time. And the local sum energy at low temperatures are actually extracted by QVT. Very interesting. So QVT allows us to extract not only sum energy, but also positive energy at zero point temperature, generating a negative energy density region in the system by quantum interference. Okay, so let's go back to the, our simplest <laughs> model, the two qubit easing model with transverse magnetic field. And then, so we have such a ground state at zero temperature. But even if in such a situation, you can teleport energy by using the ground state entanglement. Okay, let's consider uh, first some local measurement at the spin A, spin particle A. So uh, we adopt the uh, ideal measurement, projective measurement of spin A in the X direction. Okay, the projection operator is given by this equation. Okay we measure the X component of the spin, of the spin part A. But uh, this measurement does not disturb the energy around B. This is a very crucial point of this model. Measurement with no disturbance uh, of potential energy and the free Hamiltonian of B. B. Since the commutator of the, this uh, measurement operator uh, commute with the uh, uh, interaction energy, uh, potential energy, and the uh, free Hamiltonian of B. Okay? In this sense, this is a non demolition measurement of the energy of B. Okay? This is a very crucial point of this model. And uh, at the initial time, uh, the system is in the ground state, but we perform this measurement, then the post measurement state is excited state. So it implies that we need energy cost. We can compute the energy cost by this equation, and uh, this is the result. We have some positive energy, uh, which is the energy cost of this measurement. By uh, injecting this energy, you get the uh, one bit information mu plus or minus one bit information you can get by using this energy cost, okay? And of course, after injecting this energy into the spin particle B, A, 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 you have conventional energy transportation, okay? By, which is generated by the total Hamiltonian. 
So uh, this is a uh, example. Example. This is a result of this energy tra transportation. The expectation value of each component computed like that from the total Hamiltonian. So at the initial time, the energy is localized at the spin particle A. Okay, but uh, the energy uh, gradually uh, 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 transported the spin uh, particle B. The time scale of this ordinary energy transportation is given by pi over 4 k. K is a coupling constant of the interaction. Okay, this is very very standard ordinary physics. So very standard energy transportation, but quantum energy teleportation can teleport energy in a much shorter time than TC. So this is a very great advantage of QET. Okay, so the Alice get the information mu, one bit of information mu, and C is send information to Bob. Then, so Bob can perform local unit operation to spin B, spin particle B. The unit operation is given by this equation, which depends on the measurement result mu. Okay. Then, uh, you notice that during this operation, Bob can get the positive energy from subsystem B. So, this is a result of QT. So this is a positive energy which can uh, which Bob can extract with the system B. And also you can notice that so E B is smaller than E A. So we have no breakdown to energy conservation. Uh, so this is a very simple uh, QET model, uh, so minimal QET model. But uh, of course you can consider more general many body system in the ground state, and you can perform a QET operation, QET procedure. Then you can teleport energy uh, from uh, subsystem A and uh, to the subsystem B. And then if you assume that non-vanishing teleported energy EB, very interestingly, uh, this quantity this quantity becomes a lower band of entropy between A and A bar. A bar is a complementary subsystem of A. Okay? So the total system ground state, pure state. And now you can compute entangled entropy between A and A bar. But this entangled entropy is lower bounded by this quantity. So EB square over four and this uh, matrix now of the local Hamiltonian of B, okay, uh, B square. Okay, so this is general inequality. And also you can consider such a final temperature version of QT. Okay, so you perform a measurement of the subsystem A. Then, so you can get rid of some energy from some system B by using this QET. Then, this QET can be in a true of lo rapid local cooling and the generation of ground state entanglement inside B. Okay, so inside the B, uh, you have a strong <laughs> ground state entanglement. So you can use this entanglement as a resource of some quantum task, okay? So this can be uh, some entanglement factory by using QED, okay? And uh, in 2022, uh, uh, the minimal QED has been performed at the final uh, temperature in the strong local pulsing regime by uh, IQ, IQC people at the Waterloo University. So, uh, so these four people uh, uh, succeeded <laughs> the first achievement of QET protocol. Okay, so this is uh, Raymond Laflamme. And Eduardo Martinez is the uh, uh, chief of this project. So he's a very clever guy, uh, clever researcher. And after that, uh, so Ikeda, Kazuki Ikeda at Stony Brook uh, succeeded uh, in achieving a zero temperature QED of the minimal uh, uh, system by using such a uh, two qubit using model. 
by using the supercontact, superconducting uh, quantum hardware, that is the IBM, quantum computers. So he did not use a uh, computation of this IBM machine. He regarded this machine as a uh, condensed matter system, superconducting condensed matter system. Then, so uh, he tried to the QET proto <laughs> by using this computer. Then he succeeded in a negative energy density inside a quantum computer. And this worked very nice. Okay. And the QET can be implemented in principle for various kinds of physical system, including edge currents of a quantum hole system. Uh, so this system is just uh, explored in our university, in Tokyo University. My colleague, uh, Go Yusa, is uh, just started this experiment. And also, QET can be implemented, spin chains, cold trap ions, and harmonic chains, and the latter quantum field. Okay? So, if uh, you have some uh, physical system, quantum system, uh, which may be used for the quantum computer, then uh, QET can be applied in such a system, I think. Okay, so next. And let me explain our QIT experiment, ongoing QIT experiment at Tohoku University by using quantum hole system. Uh, you, you may already know the, uh, what is a quantum hole system. This system exhibits a very famous uh, effect that the quantum hole uh, effect, fractional and integer, uh, both effects happen in the same system by changing the filling factor or by changing the density, electron density. This is very famous. And the system is just a two-dimensional surface. Electron is confined in this, uh, this semiconductor surface. And also the experimentalist, experimentalist has an external electrical field in order to confine all electrons in a compact region. So, that this system has such an edge, bulk at the edge, and at this edge, we have such an electric current. So, uh, the, we have edge, the edge state, we have uh, electric current like that. So, uh, here we have bulk part and this edge, at the edge, we have such a chiral, Edge, a kind of electric current, unidirectional uni electric current at the edge. Okay, the skipping cycle, uh, cyclotron orbits can be reviewed at a quasi one dimension channel. Such an edge channel behave like a kind of Latinian rigid as a, as a fit in a current flows in a unidirectional. And also, it, it, it is very famous. The system is described in a kind of matrix field in one dimension. And, and it is also a CFT, conformal field theory. And so in this theory, we have uh, such a chiral field operator uh, law. And this operator satisfies this commutation relation, and, uh, so non to be a commutation relation. This new is just a filling factor of the system, which is just proportional to the electron density in the bulk part. Okay. And by using this computation com computator and the total Hamiltonian, so we can compute the dispersion relation of the excitation at the edge. Then you notice that our oh, excitation has a gap less. And also the spectrum is just uh, corresponds to a relativistic uh, quantum field theory, uh, relativistic conformal field theory, like that. So gap less is very typical uh, at the edge. And also, the quantum hole system is very famous as a topological matter, okay? So, so we have bulk and edge, and the uh, effective action of the system is given by these two contributions. Uh, the first part corresponds to the bulk action, which is just a chance time gauge theory. Chance time action uh, with a gauge, uh, chance time gauge uh, field, MU, okay? And but uh, this bulk term is not a gauge invariant. 
日本だとキャンセルアウト、サッチなデビューション、オブジェージインバリアンス、ブレイキング。We need the boundary action here. So this boundary action is just corresponds to a chiral shift, gapless shift. Okay. So in this sense, we have a gap to bulk and gapless edge current and combined into each other. So this is the quantum form system. Now, the deviation of the charge density can be effectively described in a free chiral boson field. Okay. So this field is a proportion to electron density at the edge. Then, so we now propose you know, some QED experiment by using this uh, quantum four H current. We use two currents, uh, which represent this uh, by this red line and the blue line. Okay. Uh, so we consider very low temperature regime. The edge is in the ground state. Then, so let's perform local measurement of quantum fluctuation zero point fluctuation of the edge at the low, lower side uh, of this current here, okay? Uh, by getting such uh, information about quantum fluctuation, uh, we should inject a positive energy to the system in A, which generates a positive energy wave packet at the edge. But this edge current is uh, just chiral. So uh, the excitation just run to the left side, from right to left, just one way. And by injecting this energy course, we have uh, uh, information about the fluctuation mu. Mu is a measurement result. And by enhance, by uh, amplify this signal of the signal and, uh, and using this uh, measurement result, we can generate positive energy wave packet in another edge current in the blue line. So here we have energy wave packet with energy E1. But this energy wave packet approaching the upper side of the zero point of fluctuation in the red line. And in the near region, when this wave packet approaching the red line, so the Coulomb repulsion uh, we have uh, then exchange uh, energy uh, by this uh, interaction. After that, this wave packet running through this side, then energy change into E2. Then you can compute the difference of energy of this wave packet. This is EB. And by choosing some good parameter, then you notice that. EB can take a positive value, okay? So you extract the positive energy from the zero point fluctuation in the red line by generating negative energy wave packet like that, which is represented by this blue wavy line. And this negative energy excitation is just followed by the positive energy wave packet, which is generated by the Alice in this region. Okay. They are a kind of a bound state. Positive energy wave packet and negative energy wave packet to construct such a pair and create such a bound state. And uh, we can explicitly evaluate the teleported energy if we take the realistic distance L between A and B, we construct such a distance L, which is order of 10 micrometer. Then, uh, we can evaluate the teleported energy. Then, so EB is just uh, order of 100 microelectron volt. This is QED uh, by using quantum hole edge current. But you may feel the 100 micro microelectron volt is too small. Then you can make uh, QED cables made of multiple channels like that you can consider an independent channel, then the total uh, teleported energy uh, enhanced like that. So uh, please make such an acute cap uh, by, by making such many, many different channels. Okay. But unfortunately, this ground state QT suffers from the general descent bound. This is a theoretical reason. We have a theoretical reason about that. 
So uh, after performing uh, such a QED protocol, then we have uh, a positive energy distribution here and a negative energy distribution here. Okay, and uh, now let cons uh, denote let the L denote the distance between them. L. Then by using the quantum field theory, you can derive this uh, general band of the teleported energy. Teleported energy is upper bounded one over twelve pi L. You cannot avoid uh, this inequality if you use the ground state entanglement. But we can overcome this uh, distant band. So distant band can be overcome by use of the squeeze vacuum state. In quantum field theory, we have a squeeze mode function, which is defined by this equation. This uh, f of x plus is just a monoto monotonically increasing uh, function like that. And uh, also in the, in the Alice region, the Bob's region, uh, the f is just uh, proportional to x or just uh, up to constant. But between them, we have uh, some uh, flat region, almost flat region, uh, like, like a proto. But uh, this uh, makes a complete set of the basis of the field operator. So you can expand the field operator by using this mode function. Then you can define another creation isolation operator. So then the squeeze vacuum state is defined by this equation by using this isolation operator. Okay? Then you can notice that. So the squeeze vacuum state, we have a squeezing of excitation, excite each particle like that. And by using this squeeze uh, state, then so we can consider a long distance uh, QET, uh, which has no bound of the distance. So uh, like that. So uh, if we use uh, such a squeeze vacuum state, uh, we have a zero energy region um, here, and we have another zero energy region here, and we can perform the QET protocol, but the teleport energy does not depend on e, uh, this L. So we have no distance bound. Then so you may ask me the, how to create such a squeezing state, <laughs> squeeze vacuum state uh, in the quantum hole edge current. And it is very easy. Just expand the edge by changing the confinement to electric potential, like that, okay? Uh, by changing the electric field and by inputting uh, uh, electron, injecting electron to the system, the edge is now expanding like that, okay? Uh, after stopping the expansion and uh, take the squeeze vacuum state of the expanded region by free dynamics of, of the field, here we have local vacuum state without energy, and if we, we have another local vacuum region without energy, but here we have uh, some squeeze region. Here we have some non-trivial energy distribution. But anyway, we can generate such a squeeze vacuum state in the quantum pole edge current. So after that, we perform the same QET protocol as a vacuum state one. So this becomes QET without limit of distance. Uh, so this is QET, and but here I'd like to add some comment about this experiment. But interesting, very interestingly, this uh, long distance QET experiment um, plays a lot of quantum universe simulator. So static edge current corresponds to first space time in one plus one dimension. And, but if we have such an expanding edge, this corresponds in a curved space in one plus one dimensions. Okay? So, as you know, so expanding universe makes the distance of two points larger in time. And when you consider such an exponential rapid expansion of the space, then so this becomes inflation universe uh, in your universe. But any physical object cannot return to inside owing to the rapid expansion of the information universe. So in this sense, we have such a cosmological horizon here. But uh, very similarly, 
uh, we have such a black hole case. Any physical object cannot return to outside on owing to the strong attraction of the black hole gravity. So inside the uh, inside inside the particle cannot go back to outside. Here we have a black hole rise. So very similar situation, but uh, inside and outside just reverse. And you may know the Hawking radiation is emitted uh, this black hole horizon. And similarly, we have the same mechanism for the cosmological horizon. Then you notice that Hawking radiation um, come out of the cosmological horizon in the inflational universe. The temperature is just half per meter over two pi. Okay. Then so many people want to explore the Hawking radiation, but are difficult in the real universe. Then the, our universe simulator can do that. So uh, let's consider three regions, region one, region two, region three in our simulator. The region two you has such expansion of space. And by choosing <coughs> such an expansion schedule, so we can realize such a uh, space time. So this is the Penrose diagram of such in a one plus one dimension edge. So this realized einstein lorentz bridge in digital space plus two flat space time. And also you can, uh, we can compute the Bogorov coefficient uh, in this system. Then you don't notice that from the region two, we have a Hawking radiation. We have a thermal radiation temperature a half over two pi. So which is just equal to the Hawking radiation. So we can simulate the Hawking radiation in the quantum hole edge current. So in this sense, if we take such a rapid expansion to make a squeeze and vacuum state, then so this region we have Hawking radiation. So this is another topic of this experiment. And also uh, in the story, we regarded the edge fluctuation as in a quantum matter in one plus one dimension in a classical space time. So we consider such a quantum superposition of matter field configuration in a fixed background space time. But very interestingly, uh, there is a possibility that the same quantum four edge is also described by a quantum gravity effective theory. So the same edge is regarded as a one plus one dimension quantum gravity system. So here we have a quantum fluctuation of the edge, but this is just a one one dimensional space. So this uh, describes uh, some configuration of space time, and we have a quantum superposition in this system. In this sense, the edge current uh, is should be described in a quantum gravity theory. Okay, this is a very interesting point. And in this paper, we suggest that this effect theory can be uh, Jacquif tidal volume gravity, uh, even at least in a compact uh, uh, system uh, without uh, no expansion case. Anyway, this is very this might be interesting. And uh, let me surprise my talk. So the first max rank entanglement structure of the ground state is in a strong local possibility of a thermal state at temperature below the critical temperature. Some local possibility has been overcome in the final temperature QT experiment. Another QT experiment at zero temperature has been performed for the zero point energy by Kazuki Keda. And also the, at Tohoku University, we just start a long distance QT experiment which can achieve uh, uh, by using the quantum four edge current. And also uh, as a spin-off, uh, this system plays a lot of the quantum universe simulator. Uh, that's all, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Masahiro. Yeah. Nice thank talk. Um, so I was hoping uh, that nobody would ask questions so I can ask mine, but no, I have to give priority to, to the other guests, unfortunately. Um, so Samuel Arsh is asking if they can use single photons and linear optics. Um, oh. is, so is, is there any experiment with optical system uh, about 3D? And that's a very crucial question, but uh... Unfortunately, uh, the QT is based on a multipartite and a multipartite system. So many body system is required. In the ground state, we have a non-trivial entanglement. 
But you, if you consider a single photon in a quantum optics experiment, so this single photon is not automatically entangled, entangled with other particles. But uh, in condensed matter system or well, quantum relativistic fields, uh, just cooling the system, we have vacuum state or ground state. In the ground state and vacuum state, we have automatically entanglement. We have a quantum entanglement. Such a setup, setup is required for the QVT. So I'm sorry, uh, but, but uh, in the quantum optics, we we can um, perform a QVT experiment by measuring the quantum fluctuation, or zero point fluctuation of the electrical magnetic field itself. But it is not a single photon experiment. Okay, uh, so I hope this is answer for the question. But I guess you can reproduce the minimal QET model that you introduced with the spin at some point, single photons, right? You can map ah. spin statistics. Mm, so no, in such a situation, we should define what is the ground state of the two photons. Sure, so, you, which, need some, yeah, yeah. you should yeah, need yeah, some yeah. Hamiltonian. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. you can have like the mm. harmonic oscillator, the free propagating wave Hamiltonian. I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I invite everyone to turn your camera on and ask questions politely, one by one. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep ask, uh, reading the many questions in the chat. So there is Onur Pulsulu, uh, who has three questions. I'll maybe alternate with other people. Anyway. Uh, first question. I'm curious about the relationship between entanglement and negative energy density. In an entangled state, uh, since conditional entropy can be negative, I don't find it surprising that local energy can also be negative. However, from a slide you presented, I understand that local energy density can be negative not only for entangled states, but also for discordant and classically correlated states. Is it possible to teleport energy using discord or classical correlations? Ah, that is a very interesting question. Hmm. Uh, so if you consider uh, such an analog of the QET by using a classical correlation, hmm, it is also possible, but uh, in my opinion, that's a very trivial. <laughs> so we have such a uh, two particles uh, correlated with the other, okay? Then, uh, we have some already uh, energy here, and this particle already, already has some energy. So without using this QET, you can extract energy from this system. The non-trivial part of the QET is just on a passivity breaking. So summer state and the ground state uh, uh, possess such a passivity property, which which means that we cannot extract energy by using local CPT operation. This is a very crucial point of the QVT. But uh, of course, <laughs> you can consider such an analog, QVT analog of such a classical correlation. Uh, that's okay, I agree. But uh, for me, it is not so interesting. It, it may be kind of trivial physics, I think. Thanks. Um, by the way, Onur, if you're online, I see that your camera is on. If you want, you can ask the other questions by yourself. I ask, uh, thanks, that I can ask the other two questions. Right. My second question is related with the uh, comparison between conventional teleportation and energy teleportation. For example, in the conventional teleportation, we can send an arbitrary unknown state. Hmm. Uh, is is it also feasible for energy? Can we send an arbitrary or unknown amount of energy from one place to another? Or is there any limitations in this sense? Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. So, uh, you may ask me now about the relation between ordinary quantum teleportation and that uh, just transport in a quantum state. And the quantum state uh, can have such energy, excited energy uh, carry inside. 
of such a system. Hmm. Then, so you perform some Q, uh, quantum teleportation protocol for this system. Then the, the other particle uh, in a teleported quantum state, and oh, that's okay. But oh, where this energy come, came from, come from? So you perform local operation to the spin B in order to reconstruct the quantum state uh, which is carried by the spin A, but this energy is prepared in the local region of B, right? So in this sense, no energy is transferred, no energy is uh, teleported by using a quantum teleportation protocol. Ordinary protocol of uh, teleportation uh, cannot realize such an activity. Uh, I hope this is a reply to your question. Uh, maybe I can ask you uh, to discuss more. I don't want to uh, spend all the time uh, for, for my questions, but let me also add one more question. Okay. Uh, and here you are using local operations and classical combinations, communication. These are the three mm -hmm. operations in the resource theory of quantum entanglement. But mm -hmm. we don't want to manipulate entanglement. We want to manipulate the energy. And in this sense, I think thermal operations are more suitable. Do you think, is it possible to uh, offer a, a energy teleportation scam based on uh, thermal operations instead of LOCC operations? Mm, instead of LOCC, I mean, uh, we can use a quantum channel, right? For example, you can consider local thermal operations. Local, ta local in time operations. Allowed, in which you are allowed only uh, exchange energy, for example, in a, in a local uh, uh, Coherently. Mm -hmm. uh, so the exchange energy coherently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So coherence, uh, that, uh, that's not a matter. Yeah. Uh, you're right. So even in such a situation, the QET can be realized. So the crucial point of QET is just a choose of good local operation, local chip operation, to realize a positive energy of teleportation, energy teleportation. But you can use such a question. So in your experiment by using quantum four edge current, just uh, uh, has such a Coulomb repulsion force. But this Coulomb repulsion force can be coherent. Uh, interaction, which can exchange energy uh, between two particles, right? So, but uh, that's enough to realize an uh, QT. So, uh, the answer is just yes, you're right. Okay. I think. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks. So, I go for the other questions. Uh, Rob had his hand raised, but then he left. He said he's clapping and uh, thank you for your seminar. Anyway, uh, S.A., uh, mysterious nickname, is asking, one of the surprising features of teleportation is that it does not need any medium environment for teleporting a state. Uh, he's talking about star guard, the uh, quantum information teleportation. But here we need a medium interactive with many body subsystems. Is it surprising that by changing locally a part of the interactive system, energy in the other part changes? That's the question. Oh, uh, in my opinion, uh, anyway, so the QET is a breaking of possibility property. So even on a ground state, we can extract positive energy by generating negative energy. So negative energy density is just a concept uh, in the purely quantum. So we do not have such a negative energy density idea in the classical mechanics. So by superpose uh, energy eigenstate, uh, several number of eigenstate of uh, total Hamiltonian, we can generate in such a negative energy region for some system. By using such a negativeness of the energy density, the, we, we perform such a non-trivial task, non-trivial quantum magic about the energy. In this sense, it is very non-trivial. And also, QET implies a more fundamental uh, meaning. So, 
the quantum energy is non-local idea, non-local concept. Okay? So, region B, we have no energy. We cannot extract any energy by local operation. In this sense, so in this region, the state is a local vacuum state or local ground state without energy. Okay? But by injecting, by depositing energy in the distant region, you can pull out, you can extract energy uh, from nothing. In this sense, in the, in the, from the viewpoint operation, uh, operational meaning, so quantum energy is non-local. This is the very crucial message uh, from the analysis of QED. So uh, I believe and this is the interest point and uh, not to be a point of maturity. Uh, I hope <laughs> this may be the reply to that question. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, so next question is by Franklin. Uh, maybe I can go for it. Yeah, maybe I can just say uh, exactly. Uh, um, thanks for the very nice talk. Uh, Thank you. Uh, my question is in the is very similar to the first one, where mm -hmm. they asked uh, if you if you can do this already with uh, classical correlations, and I understand your answer. It's just that it was not so clear for me that, uh, for instance, in this minimal model that you have, you 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 show that the the critical temperature. Is low is lower than the entangling temperature, correct? And yes. uh, and for me, it's not clear if this is a general, uh, if this is general, if this is shown to be general, if if there is any case in which the critical temperature can be bigger than the entangling temperature, so that you can do a non-trivial QET, or you can do a non-trivial extraction that you wouldn't be able to do with local operations in a system that not necessarily is entangled. This was not so clear. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Uh, so the value of this star depends on the detail of the dynamics of each system. But if the ground state has a max length structure, then we have a general theorem. We have general property. That is uh, this uh, theorem. Uh, the, you can read our result in this paper. So we can prove that. We have a non trivial uh, max length entanglement in the ground state. So we can show the existence of such a non zero uh, critical temperature distal. And also, we have a non trivial uh, low temperature regime. In that regime, we have such a strong local passivity. We cannot uh, extract an energy from the subsystem. So, this is a very general result, I think. Uh, yeah. Can I can I make one more question? Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, I under I understand that that you need uh, entanglement of, uh, with max rank entanglement in the ground state. It's proven that the existence of a critical temperature. My my question is more in the sense that uh, can you also prove that this critical temperature is always colder than the entangling temperature, the the, the ah. temperature of the thermal state. That would be entangling, so that you could still have a QET. Uh, you could only extract energy with a QET protocol, but in already in the regime that is not entangling. This my question is more in this sense. Ah, okay. Ah, that may be interesting. So, in the minimal QET case, we it is possible to compute explicitly T star and uh, T sub e, but in the general case. It's very difficult to compute the T star and the TE. So, but um, so in this sense, I have no concrete uh, answer for your question at present. But uh, intuitively, so T star should be lower than T sub E, I think. Uh, so, because so this uh, strong local passivity appears due to the Entanglement structure in the ground state. The ground state entanglement is very crucial to generate such a uh, strong local passivity at the final temperature. Okay, so the ground state uh, entanglement controls such a uh, strong local passivity. So I believe that. So T star should be lower than T, but I have no general proof. 
<laughs> if you can prove that, ah, that may be interesting. Please try that and please inform me uh, your result or your paper. Uh, it is very welcome. Uh, it, it, that is very crucial uh, problem, I think. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Um, I think Raja had a question. Yes. Yeah. I am still there. Yes, thank you Hi. again for coming to this talk. So I, I will I will try to uh, back a bit the focus to the the quantum energy initiative focus. So I, in in the QEI we we try to uh, on the one hand um, create benchmark and figure of merits to estimate the energy consumption of quantum technologies. Mm. So uh, this also. Uh, brings us to try to understand a bit more what do we mean by energy in the quantum system. So this is why this talk is very important for us. And uh, uh, on the other hand, we yeah we try to uh, have fundamental uh, understanding of of what is quantum energy. So do you think these ideas of quantum energy teleportation uh, can be used either for optimization of uh, some quantum technologies, or is it uh, really only in the fundamental level uh, that these ideas uh, uh, come in? And in general, how do you think we can have application of, of these concepts for yeah for for this idea of optimizing energy perception? Ah, thank you very much. Very uh, crucial question. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion. The QET has two realistic applications. One is cooling down of subsystem. I already explained in my talk. But the other possibility, the other application is energy distribution inside quantum devices, like a quantum computer. So in general, the, such a quantum device has such a heat generation, which may uh, cause such a uh, decoherence. So uh, such a uh, uh, process, such a quantum task uh, doesn't uh, like uh, such a uh, heat generation. But by using QT, we can separate uh, the log of such an energy transportation. One is a quantum channel, which should have a ground state entanglement or uh, possibility entanglement, low temperature regime, very clean system. But uh, the other system is a classical channel. But classical channel can be dirty, uh, even in high temperature. That's OK. But uh, we can separate the energy distribution channel in the two parts. One is a quantum channel, uh, quantum entanglement channel. The other is such a classical channel. But uh, in ordinary uh, processes, energy transport processes, the both load is uh, 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 carried uh, 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 performed by the same channel. So here we have energy and uh, like a photon, the, which is scattered by some impurity, then this generates uh, such a heat. So, but by using QT, we can separate the load. The one is a classical channel, classical information channel. The other is a purely quantum entanglement channel. This separation may be useful to develop such a quantum technology in future, I think. So, Thank uh, you very much. Very, very good question. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. All right. Are there other questions from the other participants? Uh, no, amazing. So I have many. I will ask maybe one. Uh, and maybe we'll, I hope that uh, I have the opportunity to talk with you again another time. Um, I wanted to ask again on the application side, do you think you can use these as a mean of error correction? So you have, uh, you ah. have a system and you use a measurement on part of the system to decrease the temperature and hence in, uh, enhance the purity of one or a set of qubits. And can be this be used or not as a um, multipartite, mean of multipartite quantum computing at a distance or something like that? Yeah, a very interesting question. But uh, I want to 
Unfortunately, I have no idea to express an uh, error correction code, uh, so application, QT application to an uh, error correction code. But uh, on a fundamental physics, like a black hole, I already uh, wrote a paper about that. So in the QT protocol, we need LOCC, okay? The we need some classical channel uh, to inform the measurement result to a distant point. And then what happens if we consider a noisy channel, noisy classical channel, then the measurement result uh, is, uh, can be uh, become a long answer. By using such a long answer, long result, so you cannot do, uh, uh, extract energy from the subsystem B. Then it may be interesting to consider the black hole case. Uh, so QET can be applied to now black hole physics and the concept such in a, a black hole entropy. Uh, I forget the uh, slide about that. Uh, oh, sorry. Anyway, if we consider such in a black hole space time right? and outside, uh, outside the horizon, we can perform the QET protocol. Mm. Then, so the first measurement we create a positive energy wave packet. And this positive wave packet can collapse into the black hole. Okay, We have some black hole. If we consider a very large number of scalar field, then you have a huge energy uh, in the excitation. This energy can be collapsed into the black hole. Okay, But after that, we can use a measurement result to uh, which is getting the measurement uh, created this particular energy wave packet. Okay? By using this information, uh, after uh, making this black hole, you can perform the QET outside to the zero point of fluctuation uh, of the quantum field. Then you create a negative energy wave packet. And this negative wave packet uh, is uh, absorbed by black hole and shrinking the uh, horizon area. Also, the black hole entropy also decreases in time by absorbing this negative energy wave packet. Okay? So in this sense, the entanglement of the vacuum step outside of the horizon is rated now uh, black hole entropy itself. And in this situation, you can cause a noisy channel between A and B, Alice and Bob. If uh, you consider such a noisy channel, then even if you perform some local operation to the uh, uh, region B, but you cannot do good negative energy excitation. Okay, so you in such a situation you cannot decrease the black hole entropy again. So in this sense, such an uh, application to the black hole is maybe uh, interesting, I think. But unfortunately, uh, actual uh, application of QT, such an error correction. Uh, but uh, now, young people uh, wrote many papers about QT recently. Some of them are related to such an uh, error correction, but uh, not actual realization of such an error correction code. But, okay. Uh, yeah, very interesting uh, papers, I think. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um... I have one last very quick question, more conceptual, since we have yeah. the opportunity and so we do like one hour and a half and we close this. Uh, so if we have the minimum of QET model and Alice measures their system and send the, the classical communication to Bob, who can purify their state and extract energy from it. But if Alice is quick enough, uh, right after sending the information to Bob, the energy uh, density packet that she emitted in her system might still be there or close enough. Can she, can can they extract energy from there? So can they like somehow uh -huh. create it? Uh -huh. Ah, thank you. Uh, so due to the lack of time, I did not mention about that. Thank you very much. So uh, after injecting energy uh, by us, so uh, maybe your question is related to uh, the extraction of the energy by Alice uh, herself. But uh, it is impossible because the breaking of the ground state entanglement cannot allow us that, or cannot Alice do that. So 
uh, post measurement state is already uh, excited state with low entanglement compared to ground state entanglement, right? Uh, in order to reproduce the ground state, zero energy state again by extracting the energy from the Alice region, we should recreate entanglement again. But it requires a non-local operation between A and B, right? So, uh, but actually, uh, we in C cannot do that. In C can perform only local operation. So this local operation cannot increase entanglement with the total system. So C cannot extract uh, her energy in front of her by using local operation. So that is why the uh, energy injected by energy is frozen inside the system. So the state and, is passive, uh, although it has larger energy, is passive. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, thank you very much. So uh, very good point on the QED. Thank you right. very much. Uh, I think we are done. We have a uh, long video already, and we lost some people. Yes. Uh, uh, I will. I will close the recording. You can continue discuss. There's no problem with that. Thank you again, uh, Masai. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.